Marketplace lending started around 2006, but it really burst on the scene after the financial crisis. The market lost the trust in the traditional financial sector and they were looking for alternatives and marketplace lending platforms were more than happy to provide these alternatives. After the crisis, a lending gap emerged where individuals and companies all of a sudden couldn't get credit anymore as they used to. Marketplace lending companies served two very good purposes. Private companies started making available credit to people who needed it. On the other hand, investors could get financial returns. The fact that marketplace lenders A provided credit and B provided financial returns actually masks the underlying risks. Market risk, for instance, the interest rate, credit and counterparty risk, meaning that uh, one of the counterparties will not fulfill the obligations. And we are also exposed to behavioral risk. For instance, uh, whether a counterparty will exercise the option of prepay the principal. There is no any type of uh, collaterals in place. And that uh, is one of the, of the differences between the credit portfolios in banking and credit portfolios in marketplace lending. What we are seeing is that many of the loans that marketplace lending platforms originate end up in structured portfolios that have very much in common with the, with the mortgage-backed securities of the banks that contain a lot of subprime loans. In our view, it's very important for marketplace lending companies, but also for investors to understand the drivers of risk and return of the asset class. And therefore, we built a model that allows to stress and stress test portfolios that are made up out of marketplace loans. We applied two scenarios. Uh, one scenario was about um, certain small stress uh, and immediately we've seen that uh, instead of having income, positive income, we had uh, losses. In the bank load, as I mentioned before, we have collaterals. We have uh, different types of uh, what we call credit enhancements. In banking portfolios, we make sure that uh, the great part of the exposure is covered. Whereas in uh, marketplace lending, there is no uh, coverage of the exposals. Counterparties, they have al always the option to default. They always can say, I don't want to pay uh, because uh, the interest rate is high, or because uh, the market conditions are really bad, uh, or because uh, I have other options. <laughs> and remember, counterparties, they will not lose anything because there is no collateral behind. The whole credit idea is about trust. As soon as people, they don't trust the banking system or the credit system, the people, they run away they look for other alternatives. So these new ideas, they have to, to be based on, on trust. They have to be based on something that people, they know that they will not lose the money. The marketplace lending firms, they must be able to provide all the information necessary to prove to the regulators and therefore to the market that uh, they know about the exposures to different types of financial risks. Because the risks, all the financial risks are integrated and because the counterparties are linked to each other, we do need a platform, we do need a system that is fully integrated and unified. There is a reason why information must be available to the market. Otherwise, these credit portfolios, they will be hidden, they will be fuzzy. And of course, today they can provide good uh, income, but tomorrow they could, they could come out with the losses and everybody will uh, ask why this happened. 
It happens to the banking sector as well. And we don't want this to happen in, in marketplace lending. We should learn from our mistakes. An interesting thing we see right now is that many of the banks actually are influenced by these new startups that promise to re reinvent the financial sector, reinvent credit, payments, uh, foreign exchange. And they start to copy some of the, of the look and the language of these companies and also start to offer more services, invest in these platforms, start innovation labs, etc., etc. On the other hand, the marketplace lending companies themselves start to become more and more like banks. The future of fintech can be very bright. At the moment, there is a high potential. At the moment, there are a lot of people in favor of this alternative way of uh, providing credit or getting credit. Nevertheless, if there, is a, there are some events, credit events, um, and uh, which will result some losses, the future could be not so great. On the one hand, risk management and analytics in marketplace lending companies needs to become better and more robust. On the other hand, the loans have to be much more transparent. Some of the companies have a lot of data online, but it's very hard to analyze for the, for the average investor. In our view, the future of fintech is fintech companies and banks working together because the banks have a lot of expertise in risk management, in analytics, in working with customers and working with collateral. But fintech companies don't have that. They have to build all the systems from scratch. They should, in fact, just try to use or rent these systems and collaborate to make credit much safer in the future.